Hello everyone and welcome to my second lecture series on supply chain management. So I will now look into this topic of lean supply management as I've actually stated earlier. So when we act, before we actually go deeper into uh, lean supply management, let us try to understand what actually drives, uh, what are the main uh, key concepts, the things that companies must have in order to have, have a successful uh, lean supply management. So the first of all, when we talk about lean, we cannot escape uh, this concept of waste reduction, which is the main philosophy of uh, lean manufacturing. You have seven types of waste, over-processing, over-production, you know, unnecessary uh, transportation, unnecessary motion, you know, uh, like defective products. So all these types of waste, you know, according to lean manufacturing, has to be eliminated from the uh, system. So when we uh, actually talk about uh, supply chain, you know, these different entities, different entities and different companies in the supply chain network, they have to work together in order to identify and eliminate any potential sources of waste and non-value added. Yes, this term called non-value added is a very popular term in lean manufacturing. I'm very sure you actually have heard of it. So this elimination of waste will have a direct and visible consequence, which is the reduction of cost to the supply chain. So when the cost is reduced, assuming the output uh, remains the same, the supply chain efficiency improves and cost to actually to serve reduces. It is actually important to understand that when we talk about waste reduction, you cannot actually look at a one uh, section or one company or one entity in the supply chain. Right? For example, a company may actually move the, its inventory uh, downstream uh, to another supplier in order to uh, reduce its own holding costs. This may seem actually waste reduction for that company, but uh, from a supply chain perspective, the inventory holding costs has not been eliminated from the system. So when we talk about waste elimination, it has to be done from a, by a, a with a, like a holistic perspective to it. So uh, next one, demand management. So what do we mean by demand management? So when we actually in a supply chain, uh, the performance of supply chain essentially depends on how consumer demand is managed, fulfilled and satisfied. And when we talk about demand information, uh, it comes uh, basically comes from uh, these topics or areas like forecasting and looking at the market trends and uh, this actually depends on how the firms and companies look and manage this type of information firstly and then how do they actually manage and collaborate uh, with the other entities of the um, in the supply chain network so when you do not share the information with the other entities then uh, this uh, demand management may not be very successful. The third point, process standardization. Now, what do we mean by that? When, uh, when we actually want to achieve a smooth flow of uh, inner supply chain, this can only be achieved when all the materials and processes are standardized across all the entities. Well, it may or may not be possible, but that has to be done to a certain extent to reduce the complexity. Now, this can only be achieved by close collaborations between the members and entities of the supply chain. And the typical processes to be standardized are what we call as uh, the planning and the production. 
Uh, it also helps the all the supply chain entities to have a thorough understanding of the processes involved. And uh, products and material standardization can actually share some similar components you know, across the product lines and this will actually give you economies of scale, you know, volume advantage. Now, fourth, and many people may overlook this fact of engagement, people engagement. Now, when we want to implement lean process uh, in any company, or what in this case lean supply chain, everyone has to be involved, everyone has to be on board, not just the top management, but the engineers and the operators at the shop room. Because you will see that the improvement ideas and innovative changes often come directly from those people in the shop room. So when you engage uh, people, everyone in the company, you can have access, you can tap into the gold mine of information coming from these people. And secondly, when you engage people, it shows that you care about the people. You can actually help to motivate them directly. And thirdly, if you want to make any changes successful, engagement, people engagement is the only way to actually make the organization change. In the culture in the organization change. Because it's all about the people in the organization. And lastly, of course, but not least, continuous improvement because when we talk about lean philosophy, they believe that the journey to improve will never end. If better is possible, good is not enough. So it doesn't need to be a quantum leap. You know, it can be a series of small changes, incremental changes like Kaizen, you know about Kaizen, okay. And uh, they will actually uh, perform Kaizen incremental improvements until uh, they achieve what they call their desired level of um, <coughs> achievement that they wanted to uh, basically, uh, they want what they're aiming for basically. So these are basically the essential uh, factors or drivers or things that you must have when you want to have a successful uh, lean supply chain. Now let us move on towards what we call as uh, the lean supply principles. Now all these entities in the lean supply, uh, lean supply chain, they have to have or practice certain principles. So first of all, uh, when you actually have a lean supply chain, you will basically have a smaller first tier supply base. So what do I mean by that? So there's basically you, the producer. The producer will have this what you call the first tier supplier. The first tier supplier will have the second tier and the third tier. So basically you have a large number of suppliers but they are managed in a tiered approach, in this hierarchical approach. So this is how lean supply chain, uh, the, the lean supply structure uh, basically works. And secondly, you have very close partnerships with suppliers you know, as opposed to the traditional uh, like relationships with suppliers. It's basically you, it's either winning or losing with them. It's not a very good, uh, what you call relationship. But uh, when we have a close relationship with suppliers, typically you will share the same vision and mission. You will share, maybe you will uh, have a joint design and development of new products, which is very important. And uh, when we call as uh, maybe a strategic collaboration of capital investment planning, capacity synchronization, and coordination of just in time delivery system. So all these things, you know, you must have a very close relationship with your suppliers. Okay, third one, and this is actually could be something new, 
they have this approach what we call as the market price of, uh, minus profit approach for pricing. What do we mean by that? So essentially when you want to sell products, you typically have the sub your cost and plus the profit margin. But in this case, uh, what we actually, the, what they try to do is that they first determine the market price of their supplied component and then they take away a reasonable uh, profit margin that the supplier needs to make for on each unit and so what is left is the target cost. So if the target cost is lower than the supplier's actual cost, the buyer and the supplier will then work together to lower the cost to meet the target cost. So in this way, both the market price and the profit margin for the supplier are secured. Something new, right? And then what we have this year is basically an early and close engagement with suppliers when it comes to new product introduction. So traditionally, <coughs> uh, the new products are typically designed by the producer, by your own, by the main organization. And the supplier's job is to simply to make it according to the uh, blueprint. And supplier has no involvement at the design stage. But no, in a lean supply system, first you identify your suppliers and then get them involved in the design and uh, development planning stage for a new product introduction. In this way, the suppliers will actually be able to lend their expertise when it comes to manufacturing or production of that particular product. And I believe Proton is somehow doing a uh, same a similar approach. They will call the suppliers when it comes to designing certain components or parts for a new model. So in that way, the suppliers will, give, have, will be able to give inputs of whether or not the parts are actually feasible to be manufactured or not. And for example, the engineers from the supplier uh, may actually uh, work in the, the company's uh, site as the residential engineer, as if uh, they are from the same company, and uh, many companies are doing this. So in this way, many later stage production and engineering problems can be eliminated at the earliest design stage. So that is actually the, the big benefit of what we call uh, as, uh, this early and close engagement with uh, suppliers. And the next actually point, the last point, is what we call as just-in-time delivery. So if you have heard about this uh, in lean manufacturing. So when uh, this basically, uh, let me just recap on this JIT approach. Basically, it is an approach to material control based on the view that a process should only operate only when a customer sends signals a uh, need for more parts from that process. So when a process is operated in a JIT way, goods are produced and delivered just in time to be sold. So this principle has to be applied to the entire supply chain. All the entities, all the entities will actually have to practice this JIT and JIT is not easy to implement if you don't actually practice the lean uh, supply principles. So when you actually practice is uh, just in time delivery, you won't have any overproduction. You actually only produce the parts only when you actually need it. Yes. So that is basically, uh, these are basically the principles when it comes to uh, lean supply management, okay. Maybe in the later parts, you know, I will actually be talking about uh, agile supply chain uh, later on in my next uh, lecture series. So uh, hopefully we can actually, we'll see you again uh, later on after this.